I'm just going to show you a couple key exemplary figures. This is a long-term barometer of international engagement that we've used since 74, but it actually goes all the way back to 1946. And you see there's some ups and downs, but in general, between six and seven and 10 Americans tend to favor um, taking an active part in world affairs. The most recent 2019-2018 survey findings were seven and 10. It's as high as just after the 2001 attacks, um, the Al-Qaeda attacks on the United States. So people, instead of buying into the uh, withdrawal argument that uh, the administration sometimes makes, um, they instead have just become even more supportive of taking part in world affairs. When we asked Americans what foreign policy tools make them feel safest, uh, they say, first of all, U.S. military alliances with other countries, and secondarily, maintaining U.S. military superiority. And, and a few other things, but those are the top things. Eight and 10 also say that the United States should maintain or increase the U.S. commitment to NATO, and 73% say that NATO is essential. That was the highest recorded level since 2002 when we first asked it. Um, again, maintaining U.S. military superiority that is not necessarily to say that they want to use their muscle militarily. It's, um, the other results taken together show that Americans see it more as a deterrent um, rather than actually wanting to get involved in every crisis militarily. Here I had said uh, since 2015 that uh, support for coming to the defense of an ally, like a NATO ally or South Korea has grown. Um, in 2017, 2018, North Korea was seen as much more of a threat. That's why it was higher then, but it's still a majority. And you can see they've both risen since 2015. And even for um, if China initiates a military conflict with Japan and uh, if China invaded Taiwan, it's just minorities, but they have also risen over time in the last couple of years. So the two areas where I we might see, um, and I'm curious to see whether there are changes now from 2019 are on trade and on China. So um, on trade, the, I don't know if you guys saw the recent op-ed in the New York Times by Robert Lighthizer, who was saying that um, the pandemic has revealed an over-reliance on other countries. Uh, U.S. over-reliance as a source of critical medicines and medical supplies, and that the public will demand that policymakers remedy this strategic vulnerability. We'll see. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but before that, in 2019, this was one of the surprising findings for me, is that support for international trade had surged even higher than in 2018, which was really high. And this is now among both Republicans and Democrats, large majority. So it doesn't mean that they agree on the way we should go about trade policy. For example, a majority of Republicans think that tariffs against China are effective and a majority of Democrats do not. Um, but this is one area that I think could be affected. Um, so we'll see. And the other area that might be affected is China. Um, in 2019, we found differences between Republicans and Democrats on the threat of China uh, had risen to 54% among Republicans, but still low. Recent Pew polls have shown that um, Americans have become more unfavorable, both Republicans and Democrats, 60% now unfavorable toward China, which was an increase. And they also, are very critical of China's handling of the coronavirus. They're not that, they're not full of praise for ours either. Only 47% think our own country did well, but 68% um, uh, think that, or 64% thought that China was doing a poor job. So China might be an area where we see um, additional, additional shifts. Mm -hmm.